All right. Hello, dear viewers. Welcome to another episode of me sitting in front of these cameras. Something that has been called a show on Earth. And this episode is sponsored by Appeals in a very fun way. Something I'll get to in a second. We have an art contest going in which you can win hundreds of dollars. I'll get to the details in a second. Briefly, for a moment, I do first want to get to uh, some things that have been sent in. All right. Mm. Pomegranate. I have them set the right way. One little frame that says Peter. One little frame that says draws. Wonderful art sent in by someone named Keenan, I think, who has in the past sent in some other cool Peter Draws art and has also um, bought some of my art before, so um, a very cool supporter of the channel in that way. Thank you for these, Keenan. Uh, as you can see here in this camera, they're very detailed, very cool. There's like 12 different types of marker in each one. There's like glitter marker, paint, pen, white, red, off red, black, another shade of red. Um, Everything you could ever want in a two-part uh, customized Peter Draws diptych. So thank you. Also, I'm going to pull out my phone here for a second. I know that's probably not polite to do in the middle of a video. But here on Instagram, sometimes people are very generous. In a si Wait a second. Let me be honest. This coat jacket does not fit me very well around the shoulders. I mean, I don't have like big shoulders or anything, but... I bought it from a thrift store. I could t turn it into like a t-shirt version of a jacket. There we go. Okay, there's one sleeve. They call me problem solver, Pete. <sighs> oh, that actually feels incredible. All right, let's continue. Um, what I was saying is sometimes people draw pictures of me. It's, I'm obviously very flattered. Take a look here on this. I've saved some of them uh, on Instagram. Some of the ones people have drawn. Like here's a great one of me in that sweater I got recently in the a previous video. This is by S.J. Frazier. Go give him a follow. Um, here's another one. Kelly's Art Throb. Great drawing. That's based on one of my album arts from um, Spotify. Here's another one. See people, I'm wearing the same glasses in this one. But this is the one I want to look at today. Um, I'll, I'll try to overlay another version of this picture, a higher quality version of it so you can look at the details. Lobster X. Go look him up and look at this picture on your own because in this... Uh, oh, I haven't even liked it. There we go. In this f fan art, I'll call it a fan art, and a portrait, there are like so many hidden little uh, secrets they have to do with Peter Draws, and I can't even believe it. Like, the more I look at it, the more I keep seeing. I mean, this guy is a longtime viewer, you can tell. He's got, you know, the uh, got the Daft Punk mug. You know, it looks like to be a pie in there. Anyone remember the pie incident? I think that's what that's referring to. Got some paintbrushes, post-it notes, I see. Uh, a guitar. Got Dan in there, even. Got the uh, got the cutting mat in there that I have on my other desk that was in the background of a lot of videos. Got the rotring isograph right there, a pencil. Uh, and there's like a tube of paint. There's a, a fountain pen right there. There's probably all sorts of things I'm missing because I feel like on his on this post when he posted it, people were commenting other stuff that I hadn't seen. But I mean, take a look at that. That one I just wanted to I just wanted to post. Point that out. Take a moment to look at it. Go check it out. I love that one. He's got a bunch of other... Um, this guy, Lobster X. Go check him out. He's got so many other drawings. You can see the process of his drawings, too. 
Okay, today we're going to look at a cool pen that was sent to me, some cool ink that was sent to me, and we're going to use that to draw in my sketchbook, wherever it is. But let me tell you about the art contest that I mentioned, which Appeals and I are running. And it's pretty exciting because it's the first time I've done this. Here's, here's what it's called. The theme of the art contest is Peter's Otherworld Travel Diaries. It's supposed to be like scenes in Earth, in space, or other worlds, real or imagined. Okay, it can be whatever you want. That's just like a, a starting spot for you, a place to jump off of and into the the endless void of your imagination, whatever is out there, okay? And let me give you a couple of details about the competition. Of course, there's a link in the description for you to enter and for you to read more details. But basically, here are the uh, mediums you can use. I have a little list here. You can use pen, crayon, charcoal, pencil, ink, acrylic, oil, digital, freehand or not, uh, any sort of graphic, watercolor or photography all right so it's pretty wide open um, just go into it with whatever you want you can use those mediums or any sort of mixed media the, the contest is opening today may 5th the day i'm posting this video and it'll be open for uh until june 15th so it'll be a month and 10 days approximately and you can keep entering as many times as you want until the closing date and then a month after that, on July 14th, we'll announce the winners. Now, if you're wondering, Peter, what do we win? What do we win? Let me tell you, first prize wins $300. But little bonus, there's going to be two first prizes. All right, so don't hold back. Plus, first prize, you get a free phone appeals sticker of your choice and invitation to be a appeals creator. Second place gets 150 bucks. And also a free phone appeals with your winning design and invitation to be an uh, appeals creator. And then there's going to be three runner-ups, I guess, kind of tied for third place. They all get 50 bucks, their winning design on a phone appeal of their choice. And of course, invitation to become an appeals creator. Plus, five participating artists in the competition will be randomly chosen to have their designs on phone appeals of their choosing. And out of everyone, 10 or more qualifying artists will be selected to join the creator program. So go submit your art, go make some stuff. You could win 300 bucks. If you have any questions, of course, put them in the uh, comments and I'll be, I'll be addressing this competition um, on and off as the competition progresses. If you need some ideas to maybe help jumpstart you on what to do for the theme, Peter's Otherworld Travel Diaries um, could be like, an imaginary scene of an alien filling up his spaceship at a gas station or, or you know, just something on Earth, like some, how you imagine a, a, a desert oasis to be with or without people and animals. Okay, it's up to you. Or it could just be some big zoomed out view, beautiful colors swirling together, stars, galaxies, the cosmos all swished together, okay? We're not trying to nail you down to one thing. Once again, it's just supposed to be like a idea to get you started. All right, so go click the link in the description, enter the contest. And remember, as always, you can just go ahead and um, apply to join the creator program on your own, try to monetize your art that way, or just upload your own designs and order your own designs on appeals that way. Okay, let's look at the ink we're going to be using today. Here it is. This says Intelligentsia Imperium. They sent this to me. They sent me an email saying, Peter, can we send you some ink? And naturally I said, sure. It's one of the perks that wait. All right, we have two boxes of ink here. And uh, if you look on their website, they're like, hey, we sell ink. And then there's this whole this whole blurb saying like, hey, we've been making ink for, uh, you know, since since begin before the beginning of time, since antiquity, since, you know, like, but it was like some ancient mystical tradition. And only recently now in 2020 
has it become available to the masses? And I was like, oh, okay, you know, like, sure. But then there's like this whole section on their website where there's like pictures of like these old glass tubes from like 100, 200 years ago where they were using, I'm just, I think I'm just a sucker for like glass laboratory, laboratory equipment with all like the swirls and, you know, like beakers and they have like pictures of old glass tubes and it appealed to me is what I'm saying. Anyway, so let's pop these open. Oh, does look pretty nice. Intelligentsia Imperium Inc. It seems like it says Triune Certificate of Authenticity, Quality, Assurance, and Warranty. Okay, this is pretty cool. This is like holographic. There's like a number stamped here. 70, 782. This Triune Certificate attests that the delivered bottle of Intelligentsia Imperium Inc. is firstly authentic and genuine. Secondly, an adherence to the strict production and formulation guidelines enforced during its manufacture, ensuring its exceptional quality. Thirdly, provided with warranty exacted to the space of 12 months from the date of purchase. Hubert von Sonnenbrunnen and Festus von Kaifernkost. Uh, I know while reading that I went through like 12 different accents, but it was fun. So this one is called Ebasis Obscure Black. Look at that, it's like cushioned here and a nice little cloth cushion. Oh, it's got a wax seal on it with a ribbon around it. Holographic seal on the back. And I will say these boxes do seem pretty nice. These are some of the nicer boxes I've gotten in the sense that like, at first I thought they were dirty, but there's just like a, I don't know if you can tell in the video, but there's like some sparkliness to it. Plus they're just pretty. Bottle number one. Bottle number two. Another Triune certificate. Likewise. All right, these certificate numbers line up. They come one after the other. 782, 783. Nice. They both have they both have a little holographic stamp here in the middle. I like that. And this one is called Eric's Veiled Black. Hmm. These are pretty nice bottles. I like them. They're nice and sturdy. All right, here's a sketchbook we're gonna try it out in. Of course, you can see I've tried out lots of uh, other inks here in this sketchbook. So I know that a lot of inks do work good in this. You know, they don't bleed through and stuff like that. This is a well-tested sketchbook. Um, drawn a lot of stuff in here. It's about half full right now. This where we'll test it, but first, of course, we need a pen. This pen was sent to me by Bittner.com. I think if you go to Bittner.com, it says Bittner.com. And then the, their tagline is something like, the pleasure of writing. They sell pens. Two pens. A note. This is probably ink. I think this is just pa packing peanuts now. Says Peter. Nice handwriting. It's a nice envelope. Look at that. It's got like a. It's got. It's an envelope with a upholstered interior, practically. Hi, Peter. Enclosed in this package is two auto hut pens. One is a fine, and the other is an extra fine. I also sent a bottle of a Bittner exclusive Noodler's Caramel by the Sea ink. It's yours to keep. Once you're done with the pens, please ship please ship them with the label I provided. Enjoy. Oh, I have to give them back. They must be worth a lot.
The worst part about sending, having to s send these pens back is not that I won't have them anymore. It's just that I'll have to repackage everything. I know, I seem like a little baby. I'm only gonna un I'm only gonna unbox one of them if I have to send them. If, <laughs> if that's the case, at least I get to keep the ink. I know. I feel s I suddenly feel so spoiled. You know, like oh, shocked at the idea that I'd have to send back a pen. I mean, I sent back pens before, but uh, you know, they were like one or two thousand dollar pens. Oh, all right. This looks like a nice rich blue, caramel by the sea. Add the, that to my collection of noodlers. We'll probably use that at some point. To I'm totally fine with sending it back, by the way. I don't mean to be like, oh, I only want stuff I can keep. This does seem like a nice pen um, in the sense that, look, um, here in the box, it also comes with a little booklet. Comes with a converter, piston converter. That's good. Auto hut. This is a cleaning cloth like you would get with a camera lens or a pair of glasses, I guess. Not sure what you'd do with that. Personal auto hut writing instrument. Unique serial number engraved. I'm guessing I shouldn't uh, register it. Now here we have it. The thing is I'm not sure I didn't I didn't catch exactly which like which one this is. I should look on their website. I mean, you can tell it's like well polished. It feels heavy in my hand. It's hard to get the camera to see it, but there's an OH engraved, like laser engraved here on the end and then on the, oh, that's the, that's the secret serial code that I can't use here engraved on the side. It says auto hut kind of underneath the uh, clip here. And here, OH again. I mean, it's it's nice. It has, I do like the the contrast of the glossy metal and the matte metal here with the what's this called? Knurling. Got to open it up. There's a cartridge in here, an empty cartridge. Oh, there's a full cartridge. I'm going to break the seal. I'm going to use the Eric's. No, I'm going to use. Oh, I got two types of black. I just realized that. This one well, it seems to have a purplish hue to it, though, even though it's called black. I'm going to use this one, the purple black. Void, it says. All right, dip it in, suck it out. Clean it up. Black pens, they never get dirty. The longer you use them, the stiffer they get. Straight up the, oh, it works right away. That's good, that's a good sign. Auto hut. All right, I do like how it feels in the sense that uh, it's not super flexible. It's nice and crisp and uh, kind of, you know, kind of stiff. Of course, that's what I like in a fountain pen. A lot of other people don't like that in a fountain pen because, uh, you know, it's kind of like a whole area of fountain pens is the flexible nibs. I personally don't like that in a fountain pen because uh, I, I like drawing with fountain pens. And for me, the flexible nibs introduces a an area of unpredictability in the line drawing that frustrates me a little bit and this feels really nice in fact i want to start drawing with it immediately i guess we're doing a purple drawing and so we did draw in purple i had a little bit of a false start with one drawing you can see here at first i just i don't know i didn't like the vibe the feeling the direction it was going and that's okay. If you don't like what's going on, you can either change the direction that it's going by drawing something else on the same drawing, or just flip the page. Go to the next drawing. Don't be a, uh, don't be you know held 
under, under the power of your drawings, you can have the power over your drawings. Anyways, I'm not going to make, I want to apologize, but I don't want to make a totally separate apology video. So I'll just say it right here. I, I want to apologize for the little like pouty face I made when I read that little card and I was like, oh, I don't get to keep the pen. You know, I don't want to be that spoiled uh, little bratty YouTuber who's like, oh, I don't get to keep the pen. The, the kid who opens the birthday card from grandma and says, what? No money? Anyways, uh, this is a very cool pen. However, I will say my impression of it was initially dampened unfairly in a totally different way. I don't know if some of you noticed or recognized the design, uh, but I have actually showed a pen very similar to this one previously on, on this channel. And it was um, kind of a, a controversial video in the sense that, um, I don't know, I was feeling rascal, rapscallious, um, and um, I, I reviewed another pen. Um, it, it was like a combination pen review mukbang video in which I tried to review a pen while very messily, intentionally messily eating chicken wings and getting chicken wing sauce and ranch dressing all over the pens and all over the drawing at the same time. I was just seeing if I could bother people or if people would put up with it, I guess. I don't know what I was doing, but, you know, things. life is weird. And anyways, that pen I reviewed is called, if you, if you, Pretty much, if you go to Amazon and you type in fountain pen, it's it's pretty, there's a pretty good chance, at least back then, probably even still now, pretty good chance that this other fountain pen is one of the first ones that will pop up, and I could never figure out why. That's why I ordered it b back in the day. This other one, it's called Matte, it has the longest name. It's called Matte Black Forest Fountain Pen Extra Fine Nib Classic Design with Converter and Metal Pen Box Set by Hong Dian. And I don't even know why it's called a set because it's just a pen in a box. Anyways, but it's one of those things where you can tell they're like loading the title with um, but, um, keywords or buzzwords or the, you know, whatever to make the search ranking go up. Something about this pen really did hit perfectly in the Amazon search rankings because it has like 10,000 reviews and uh, there's tons of reviews of it on on YouTube, and I think that's maybe what I was trying. I was a little bit annoyed at, so I made that dumb video. Um, anyways, I'm 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 annoyed at that pen because I don't know it's just by some random company, you know. And anyways, the point is they, I I, I have very I'm more lax feelings on the idea of idea uh, um, designs being ripped off than a lot of people in a sense that I think that if one person does something. Everyone else is more than welcome to try to take that idea, run with it, and try to do it better. Otherwise, there would be no progress and improvement in the world, right? If someone made a, a, a car that you started with a crank, and then someone went and made a car that you start with an ignition, the person who made a car starting with a crank wouldn't be like, hey, you stole my idea for a car. The, no, they took it and ran with it and made it better, right? So, I mean, there has to be all, all of creativity and design. You know, there's even that famous book called Art is Theft, right? Everything builds on top of everything else. But I think there is some room for nuance there in that idea. And we can just look and see sometimes and know that one de sometimes designs clearly are copies of other designs a little bit too heavily influenced, perhaps. And I think that's the 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 case here. So the the pen I'm reviewing today is from Auto Hut. Um, on the Bittner website, it is the Auto Hut design for uh, Auto Hut. They just number their designs. Okay, it's like a very it's, it's like a very German, you know, I don't, the, the German German design and uh, manufacturing and engineering has all their their uh, you know their stereotypes. Uh, and this kind of fits into it because they just numbered their designs one through seven or eight, design one, design two, design three. And then there's some variations inside those designs. And this one I have here is design four, black matte guilloche. And then it took me a, a, a minute to figure out what guilloche is. Um, but apparently that's just like knurling. And it 
I couldn't really figure out what the difference between knurling and guilloche is. But basically what I figured out with my um, about one minute of Googling is that knurling is more, more has to do with uh, like tools and machining of like, well, tools and like industrial stuff. And guilloche is something that's more likely to be done to like a, well, maybe a pen, but more likely to be done to like a, a watch face or like a Fabergé egg, right? Some more decorative sort of things. But they're all kind of done with like lathes. I think guilloche stuff is. Anyways, um, but this pen, what I'm, I don't know if I ever outright came out and said it. What I'm trying to say is that this Auto Hut Design 4 Matt black matte guilloche looks almost exactly like that uh, Hong Dian Black Forest pen on Amazon, except this pen is $316, and the one on Amazon is only $16, right? And I know what you're wondering. You're wondering, well, you've, you've used both of them, Peter. Does this Auto Hut one feel like it's worth $300 more? <sighs> And I don't know, $300 means um, a lot of different things to a lot of different people. And like I said, I was a little bit skeptical at first because I, I pulled it out of the box, out of the, and, I, and I saw it, and immediately my, my thoughts soured a little bit because I'm just kind of perpetually annoyed by that other pen, how it just, like it, there's so many other cool pens that I think should have, at, at, even at that $16 price point on Amazon, right? That I think should have 10,000 reviews instead of that random Chinese ripoff, right? Uh, so I, I kind of had like a bad, a bad taste in my mouth as soon as I saw this design, but I shouldn't, right? Because I'm pretty sure this German design came first. I mean, I, there's no way I can really know which direction the flow of ideas went. There is, I, I can't completely rule out the, the idea that, uh, you know, the Germans, the, the Otto Hut saw what the Hong Dian uh, company did, and they were like, ooh, we should make a pen like that. But I think it probably went the other way around, right? Um, I think this Otto Hut design probably came first, and that I should, uh, I mean, I like it. It looks good. I, I don't, I, I probably, if I was going to, if I was going to purchase one for myself, I'd probably get one of their... Uh, like stainless steel looking ones, just because that's kind of my personal preference. But if I was just comparing them, um, the Auto Hut one is maybe about 1.5 times heavier, and there is a really nice difference on the guilloche, guilloche part versus just the uh, smooth part. The guilloche part is matte black, and the other part is a really nice, glossy... Um, What's it called? PVD? Yeah, PVD, right? PVD metal finish is uh, physical vapor deposition. It's how they put like cool, well, like the black. It's why the, the pen is made of stainless steel, I think, but it, it's black. And I think they do the same thing with the nib. Have you ever seen pictures of those giant, um, those giant balloon animal sculptures by Jeff Koons? They're like 20 feet tall but they're like crazy green, purple, blue colors. Um, I think those are coated with PVD also. But even though it's hard to shake the idea that I don't like the design of this pen, even though I have like a little bit of, you know, that, that shower, that sour taste as far as the design um, of the pen in my mouth because of this other pen. And I mean, I guess that is just that, just the idea that, that sour taste can exist from another pen is a good um, argument for why, you know, ideas shouldn't, I mean, designs shouldn't be able to be so blatantly copied. I um, mean, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a one for one copy. Like if you put them next to each other, uh, you know, there's like, there's a, there are a, a few millimeters off and cer some certain dimensions and stuff like that. But drawing with the $16 pen does kind of feel like I'm drawing, trying to draw with a, a toothpick dipped in ink compared to this auto hut one the auto hut pen i will admit does feel a lot better it handles a lot better it was really really nice to draw with 
the best word I could think of when I was drawing with it was precise. That's just what kind of popped into my head over and over again. Um, it wasn't too sharp and scratchy, even though it was almost there, but it was just writing just this side of that line. And it wasn't too like soft and smooth and buttery. Some nibs are like that. And like I said, the, the nib didn't flex at all or too much. Well, at all would have been too much for me personally. There were no ink flow problems. Um, yeah, I was just really happy with it, despite having that initial shock of noticing that it looked like the other pen, which was, you know, it was just weird. But definitely go check them out on uh, bitner.com. I'll put a link to them in the description. All right. Go have a browser on their site. Thanks for sending this pen. I'll send it back. I'll send it back soon, you know, soon-ish. And uh, also this this ink, too, I was really happy with. Well, I, I don't know. I, I don't know if I've ever gotten ink in boxes so brightly um, embossed like that. And also, just like the attention to detail, like the fun way they did their invoices to look like crazy certificates like that. And But, but I mean, there was a little bit more to it. Like the numbers on the invoices matched the uh, holographic void seals on the bottles so it wasn't like they were just pumping them out throwing throwing them in boxes like it was all matching up right so it, it did feel like there was an extra attention to detail there that i haven't seen in a lot of other ink bottles and uh, i don't know i like it so i'll put a link to that in the description too and uh and a link to the to the to the notebook i'm using here and maybe some other links too and and of course a link to the competition i'm doing with appeals go submit your art all right None of it's, there's, there's no requirement for level of expertise or professionality. None of it, nothing's too good or too bad, all right? There's, there's no cost to submit, so there's no reason not to get in there, win that 300 bucks, see what you can do, all right? Everyone's welcome. All right. All right. Thanks for, thanks for watching, everyone. <sighs> I'm going to bed. By that, I'm, I mean, I'm going to go lie in bed and... And uh, and watch Shark Tank. Look, I've been watch. I've been recording a little bit of a, a vlog later. Later, so you should um, maybe you'll see. You'll get it later. Okay, you'll be. You'll see the behind the scenes. All right. Bye.